All right, there we go. All right, when this flame sensor turns on, I should get 24 volts down here. All right, there it goes, turns on. Should be 24 volts any second. There it goes, 25 volts, no startup. 25 volts, no startup. So that's a bad valve. And I'll even demonstrate. I'll even demonstrate a little tap. Love tap on this valve and then it'll start up. Just with the back of the screwdriver, real light. So this is going to shut off. The producer's going to shut off and it's going to try again. Okay. And so this valve has got a sticky. It's, it's stuck. There it goes. Turning on. There it goes. And just from barely tapping it there. I mean, that shouldn't. That's a bad valve. All right. So I got a Goodman HVAC furnace. And uh, I've had some problems with it. Let me tell you, try to explain as much as I can for myself and for YouTube. So my inducer motor, the old one, seized up. This thing wouldn't spin no more. So I went and bought a, new, a replacement, installed it. Then I started having problems with the heater not working. Like it would work and then not work. Work and not work. It would work sometimes and not. So I couldn't figure it out. I thought it was the gas valve. I kept getting, I bought three new gas valves kept putting them in there and it wasn't the problem okay I went and I got a control board thinking I wasn't getting power to the gas valve wasn't the problem so if you ever replace an, in, an induced motor like this and you might have the same problem as I did okay it came with a new seal and I figured uh I don't need it because the videos I watched of people that had these seals or replaced it they never even mentioned replacing that seal so if you look at my old seal here, see how bad that is compared to this new one? How thick that is and how bad this one is? So what's happening is this thing, is this inducer motor, it sucks the air in through the back, right up on there. It sucks the air out of this hole right here. So it sucks the air out, and what, what that does is there's a pressure switch. And here's the pressure switch right here. Let me show you. There's two of them on this one. It's a two-stage furnace. So there's one pressure switch here and there's one there. This one um, detects if the if there's getting air out of the inducer out, you know, out to your street or wherever it's going, your exhaust. And the other one, this one here, is getting it from this this right here. This little container, this little plastic piece. So if that seal is bad, it's gonna leak air. It's gonna be sucking air here. But it's going to suck air from, you know, not from inside as well because this seal is bad. So you must replace this seal. So I took that one off and started to clean here to put my new seal on. Okay. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you why this is important in a second here. And I looked and looked on YouTube. To find the solution to this problem, because you know there's so many HVAC techs showing what they do for a living on YouTube, showing them the problems, the customers that they go to. I just couldn't find this problem. So the seal, when your inducer's bad, the seal needs to go, throw that one away, put the new one in that it comes with. And the, the reason why you have to do that is because this is a negative switch here, negative pressure, this hose here. And this plugs right into this little box, okay? So... When you, this one's a negative pressure, so I have to suck for that switch to work. Watch when I start to suck on a little bit. Can you hear that? It's a switch in there. Okay, so when I, when this thing started getting power, when the, when the igniter's lighting, and this is getting 24 volts for those four seconds, if I blow, if I suck on this, 
the heater will start every time. And that was my problem. The problem was the seal was no good. So it wasn't getting enough negative pressure out of here, enough suction to suck this, to power the switch. Cause this switch works on negative suction. Some of them work on the opposite where it's actually pushing air. This one's negative, which is sucking power. And this switch is good because I tested it. I sucked on it when I, and it turns on the furnace. And this really bugged me because I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. It's something as simple as a, a little seal. And another thing I found is I pulled the, when I pulled the inducer out, I, I should have checked, but there's a little drain, condensation, condensation drain that drips out right here. That thing was, let me see if you can see in there. That thing was really clogged up with hard water. So the water was dripping down this pipe, going into my inducer motor. When I pulled the inducer motor out, it dripped a bunch of water from inside this inducer motor. So it was dripping into this pipe here. Okay, see it's still wet in there a little bit. And then getting into that, into the inside of it. And that ain't good, because you're sucking all kinds of water. And not only is it sucking in there, it's, it got in here into this hole. You don't want water in there. And then you have, uh, you know, you got just a big mess of water leaking everywhere. And it wasn't leaking out to right here, where it's gonna flow, you know, put to a drain or whatever. So that was my issue. I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure because I haven't put this back to, together yet, but I just wanted to make a video of this because, you know, I was going, you know, I'm not an HVAC tech guy, but I'm a do-it-yourself guy and I, I'll learn anything and try to figure it out. I put new sensors in. First thing I did was put, bought new sensors. Then I got the new gas valve. I actually got three of them, two new ones and one on eBay. One I returned because I thought it was bad. I don't think it's the, the gas valve itself. Like I said, I think it was just, it, it wasn't getting enough suction from in here because of the seal on that inducer. And not only that, I had this really bad uh, condensation leak going into that inducer. And that could have been clogging up the inside of in here as well. I try to reach in there with my finger to see if there's any water in there. When I pulled this thing out, you could see there was a little bit of water coming out. So might want to check that if that happens to anybody. I'm, this might be a rare thing that happens where you, you know, replace the inducer motor and you forget to do that seal. When I looked it up, see even this little cork thing down here, it's got a little bit of water. When I looked it up on YouTube, nobody mentioned replacing that seal. Not as far as I can remember. So sim a simple thing like just a seal can, you know, fix everything. So. I'm gonna take a video in a minute after I get this all back together and we'll see if that fixes my problem with this HVAC system. Because again, I'll get heat on for a little bit and then it, the heat will get to 60 degrees or whatever. It'll shut off. And then when it goes below and it goes, it, it, the thermostat tells it to turn back on, it doesn't turn back on because it, it's only got three tries to, to ignite it and those three times will fail and I won't have heat for hours. And then it'll try again. It'll lock me out for an hour and then it'll turn back on hours later. So this might have happened to somebody on, on YouTube land. So I hope this helps somebody. All right. Got everything hooked back up. Also, these lines that come down the condenser pipe here, these lines here, I took them off. They were quite dirty inside as well. And this one and these side ones, they need to be cleaned out every so often. They can get clogged up. If they get clogged up here, it's going to get clogged up everywhere else up top. All right, starting it up, the inducer's on, inducer motor. And then the ignition spark igniter is lighting up. All right, we got flame. All right, there was no hesitation there. So this should be good. Try that again. That, I just disconnected the sensor there. That's all that was.
All right, so hopefully that fixes the problem. Again, I thought it was the gas valve. And because I wasn't getting no error codes on this, no flashing on the, the control board saying that my pressure switch was bad or anything like that. But again, that seal was probably causing the air to not to have that, that negative um, air that it needs to suck from this hose here. Because if you take this hose off, see you got no flame. You gotta have that negative pressure pulling from the inducer from this little containing box right here. And that's, it's a double pressure switch. So it's got one in the front side and it's got one down there right here. So if either of those ones are not getting, uh, if they're not working, this thing won't work. And it's sad because I was thinking it was the valve the whole time because I didn't have any fault codes for these pressure switches and it would work sometimes and sometimes it wouldn't so but we'll see I'll keep you updated and let you know if, if this is a hundred percent um, a fix but I'm pretty sure that was was it it's just that seal was not allowing it to keep um, suction but we'll see all right guys here's the end of the video update on my furnace problem so um, I'm not sure why but in the beginning of the video I showed you where I would tap on it and it would start it, the burners would light up and uh, I done that several times and you know most of the time it started up the furnace and I don't understand that really why it was doing that to this day <laughs> you know here we're, we're like two two days later and, and my furnace is working just fine and so whatever I did whether if it was that seal it, most likely it was a seal. It was the combination of two things. It was a seal, which is keeping it from getting enough pressure to that switch, to this switch here. And uh, partly because the condensation that was going in there was probably causing the motor to slow down. And I noticed it was actually kind of hot sometimes when I touched it, the uh, motor housing. So that was probably from all that water getting in there and making it harder for it to turn because we all know water when you get water into a fan it, it could slow it down so those two combination of things after replacing my inducer motor is what was the problem with my furnace and I spent probably since the inducer the inducer was about hundred eleven dollars the motor but then I spent another hundred eighty dollars on a new valve sensors and uh, control board so uh, they were on Amazon, they were fairly cheap. And I also got a used valve too, because I thought, well, what are they selling? Junk valves on Amazon? So I went and got a eBay one. So I, I believe all those valves were good. It's just, I don't know, I just, it, what blows my mind is why when I tapped on it, it would work most of the time. That doesn't make sense to me, unless it, it, unless it had just had been a coincidence is all it could have been. Because I watched other HVAC videos and they said, if you tap on the valve, the valve is bad but not in this case so that's why I wanted to keep on telling you about my situation in this video because this might happen to you out there there might be one person that I could help out there that this happens to where they install an inducer uh, motor and then all of a sudden their gas valves acting up because that's that was my case and the gas valves none of them were probably bad even my original one was probably still good so strange things in the furnace world uh, <laughs> Being HVAC tech, probably uh, they probably run into a lot of weird things like this all the time. But uh, like I said, I tried to go on YouTube and find uh, somebody that had the similar problem to this. Couldn't find nobody. Couldn't find no HVACs. But you know, I didn't watch every video out there. I'm sure there could have happened uh, before to someone else. But this was my case, and that's how I fixed it. Just uh, putting that new seal in and uh, cleaning out that uh, condensation trap and uh, now my furnace is going real good and you can see outside here we are January 15th and we got snow so yeah having a furnace in the winter is uh, very important 